Good evening, groovy citizens, and happy, fantastic Friday. You guys, it is Friday. The weekend is here. But let me tell you why today is important and exciting. Today is important and exciting because it is the last day in the month of June, but it is also the last day in the second quarter of this year. So that means that when you wake up tomorrow, it's going to be a whole new month, the 1st of July, and it's going to be the first day in the third quarter. So here's what I need you all to promise me. I need you to promise me that you are not going to keep looking at your list of to-dos and just glossing over it thinking, oh, I have plenty of time. It's still early. Well, you know what? In theory, yeah, it is still kind of early. However, we have completed, after today, the first six months of the year. We are now getting ready to go into the second six months of the year. I don't know about you all because I've been down that road many times. I will not get to the fourth quarter and I still have this laundry list of stuff that I need to do that I should have done months ago. So having said that, so I can jump into my topic, if you have stuff on your to-do list, I need you all to get it out and get started. Don't wait until you get to the third quarter and say, oh, let me jump on my list. And then you're mad because you don't have enough time to get it all done. Okay, I promise you will thank me for it later. Now, it is 72 de degrees outside. It was just pouring down. And honey, when I say pouring down, I mean, visibility was very slim. So I'm so thankful that it has stopped raining. As you can see behind me, I'm not in my usual spot. And that is because I was leaving out of my sister's house. And so I'm headed back home. And I said, well, you know what? I have my notes. Let me go on and just get this video done now. So... I can get on home and get myself together to relax for the rest of the evening. Now, let's jump right on in. And our topic for today, if you watched my video on Wednesday, and I'm hoping that you did, but if you didn't, make sure you go back and watch that. But today, we're just continuing. This is part two. And the topic is what Joseph's life tells you about your dreams and purpose. So again, if you didn't watch Wednesday's video, make sure you go back and watch that video as well. So we pick up with number nine, because remember I gave you the first eight on Wednesday. So we have nine through 17 today. So number nine, God will give us grace wherever we are. Mm, come on, somebody. God will give us grace. That'll shout you right there, wherever we are. So when Joseph was a slave, God provided him with the grace that he needed. Just like Joseph needed grace, so do we. I don't know about you. I truly don't know about you. But I know that when I wake up every morning without fail, as I have my morning meditation time, I thank God for waking me up. I thank God for providing a roof over my head, food in my refrigerator, clothes on my back. I thank God for having a, allowed me to have a job. I thank God for all the things that he's done, the things that he's doing, and the things that he's going to do. And then I say, Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy that are new every day. I thank God for his grace and his mercy that he gives to me, that he gives to you, that he gives to us, even when we don't even deserve it. Do you realize that, uh, that God gives you grace and mercy and a lot of times you don't even deserve it? Sometimes I don't even deserve it, but he gives it to us every day. He doesn't say, okay, I'm only going to give you so much grace and mercy for the week. And if you use it all up, then you're going to have to wait until next week. No, it's new every single day. Number 10, our faithfulness to God will be thoroughly tested. Mm. Our faithfulness to God will be thoroughly tested. And y'all forgive me. I just realized that light is on. So... Is it going to cut off? Hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure why that light is on. Okay, that's going to get on my nerves. Anyway, let's keep going. So as we wait on God, we will be tested 
in all sorts of ways. Joseph's key test was Potiphar's wife. Y'all remember that story, right? Trying to seduce him. And if you don't, go back to Genesis 39 and 10. And after he said no to her, many times, mind you, and passed the test, he was taken closer to his dream and away from Potiphar's wife. Job, I said Job, we're not even talking about Job. Joseph <laughs> was tested. And just like Joseph gets tested what is that y'all what in the world i just saw a bug on my window oh it's on my sorry y'all forgive me just like joseph was tested but god see here, wait a minute let me say this just like joseph was tested by potiphar's wife coming on to him and he kept telling her no he kept telling her no 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 and when he passed the test god was able to then move him closer to his dream and further away from her but see here's the thing y'all whenever you're being tested hear me now whenever you're being tested god already knows whether you're going to pass the test or fail it that's what i love about god he already knows whether or not you are going to pass or fail that test nothing and i mean absolutely nothing that we say or do is ever a surprise to him. Now, it may be a surprise to you. It may be a surprise to other people, but it's never a surprise to God. He already knows whether or not you're going to pass that test. Mm. Number 11, obedience doesn't always produce the expected visible results. So we know that Joseph resisted Potiphar's wife. And as a result of that, she accused him remember she falsely accused him and he ended up in prison so the lesson here is that sometimes a step closer to your dream can seem like a step further away y'all you ever have those times where every time you step closer to your dream it seems like you're being pushed back further Joseph had no way of knowing that prison would be the passage to his promotion. And in the same way, we never know how God is going to lead us to uh, his purpose. So let, let me unpack that a little bit before I move on. Joseph had to go to prison in order to be promoted. Are y'all following me? So, so... I'm saying all that to say this. You, I'm not saying that, that you're going to have to go to prison. No, I don't want you to, and I certainly don't want to. But what I'm saying to you is sometimes you're going to have to go through some stuff in order to be promoted in whatever area of your life that, that you need that promotion to come. So God's going to take you through the wilderness, and that's all right because he's going to bring you out on the other side, and you're going to have those things that you've been asking him for. Mm. So one thing that we do know is that God likes to use unconventional methods, but we must trust him whenever, whatever the circumstance. So let me say this, you might have, you might've been let go of your job, from your job for whatever reason. And no, it didn't feel good. And you thought, Lord, what am I gonna do now? And then God said, you know what? I got something better for you. That's why I allowed you to go through that because I have something better for you. And so even though you lost this job over here that you loved, you love the people that you work with, God gave you something else better over there. And here's the kicker. If he hadn't let the, this go over here, you couldn't have got what's over there. Mm. God doesn't use conventional methods all the time or he uses unconventional methods number 12 the key to our promotion is within us so the key to joseph's promotion was his ability to interpret dreams it was within him all the time although it is always there it can't be made effective until we let god work within us come on now you have to let god work within you in order to utilize your gifts and your talents. I don't know if you know that, but you really do. So we must submit to God's will. I know sometimes we're tempted to, to, to submit to Michelle's will or to, mit, to, to submit to Mary's will or Joseph's will or Barry's will or 
Christina's will, whoever those people may be. But until you submit to God's will, mm, you're just going to be lost. Who y'all, that's deep right there. Number 13, God will arrange for people to lead us to our promise. So while Joseph was in prison, God arranged for the cupbearer and the chief baker to join him. He also arranged for both men to have dreams, which Joseph would interpret. It would ultimately lead to the fulfillment of his own dreams. So you see how God put those two individuals in prison with Joseph. That wasn't done by accident. That was done intentionally. Joseph was then able to interpret the dreams that they had, which in essence allowed Joseph to fulfill his own dream. Mm. All of this will be in the description box. So if we try to fast track our promotion, we will definitely fail. Our promotions belong to God. Come on now, doesn't belong to you. Your promotion belongs to God. So we shouldn't try to get ahead of him. And that's unfortunate that, you know, we and we do, we all get to a place where we're like, Lord, I'm tired of waiting. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready for this, this new job. I'm ready for this, that, and the other. And God says, I know it's coming, but just wait. I, I need you. I, I have some things I need to do over here. And as soon as I accomplish, get you to accomplish this, then I'm, I'll move you over there. It's not that he's not going to bless you, but you can't get ahead of God. Because number one, he's not going to allow you to. And even if he does... Excuse me, that thing that you're trying to get to, it's not going to work out. Number 14, sometimes it may seem like all is lost. God allowed Abraham to reach the age of 100. Then his promise came in the form of Isaac. Go back and read Genesis 21 and 5. Is there anything too hard for God? I'm asking you, think about that. Is there anything too hard for God? Because I know firsthand that there is nothing too hard for God. God can do all things. As the Bible says, God can do anything but fail. And so make sure you go back and read Jeremiah 32 and 27. So he is not limited by anything that exists. So there is indeed nothing impossible for him. As, Jace, as uh, Joseph later discovered, we just have to adjust our minds to believe. So if he promised, he will certainly do it. If God promised it, he is going to do it. This is why you all have got to get into your word. And I know this is not a Bible study, but I have to say that you've got to get into your word because if God promised it, he's going to make it come to pass. Number 15, perseverance over time will bring your dream to fulfillment. Joseph was around 17 years old when God gave him the dreams of his destiny. He was 30 years old when he became governor of Egypt. Let me say that again. He was 17 when he get when he when he received the dream, but he was 30 when he became governor of Egypt. There will be many obstacles that you will face, but the biggest test is time. If you want to reach your destiny, you are going to have to persevere. As it was with Joseph, God knows what we will go through before he gives us the dream, but he gives it to us anyway. We have, we have what it takes because we have him with us. I said that already, didn't I? God already knows what you're going to go through. He knows what you're going to go through going from A to Z. But he's going to allow you to go through that path anyway. See, because there's something that you need to learn. And just, let me tell you what bothers me, and then I'm going to move on. It bothers me when people go through something and they haven't learned a daggone thing. They've come on, the, come out on the other side and they still do and say the craziest things. It's like, duh, did you not learn anything? I mean, anything at all. Did you not? And I'm not saying that you're not going to make mistakes again because we all make mistakes, but you should have learned something. That's why anytime I'm going through something big, small or indifferent, I say, Lord, what is it that you would have me to learn from this? I need you to show me what is it that you want me to learn from this? Because I promise you, everything that you're dealing with, there's a reason why you're dealing with it. And there's something that God wants you to learn from it. Mm. Number 16, God will always fulfill his promise and more. 
So God always gives more than what he promised. Y'all, That's that'll shout you right there. God always gives more than what he promised. When God is fulfilling that promise that he gave you, he sh be sure that there will... Wait a minute, hold up. Fulfilling that promise he gave you, be sure there will be additions because he gives us abundantly. Always know that whatever it is that God is, is giving you, he's going to give you double for your trouble because he's an abundant giving God. I have never seen God give me just a little bit. If I ask for this, God says, okay, I got you. He gives me this, but he also gives me this. Because again, he's an abundant giving God. Number 17, last but not least, God always sees the bigger picture. For every fulfilled dream, there's the bigger picture. For Joseph, God used him to preserve Jacob's family who were to become Israel. I'm sorry, wait a minute, my handwriting, y'all. For Joseph, God used him to preserve Jacob's family who were to become Israel. Joseph understood a bit of the picture, but not all of it. We also may only see a small part of God's purpose, but there is always more. Mm. Y'all, I don't know about you, but I have enjoyed doing this two-part series on looking at Joseph's life and figuring out how or what it tells us about our dreams and our purpose. And I hope that you all got something out of it as well. I'm going to do a quick recap and I'm going to let you be. So again, today was part two of what Joseph's life tells us about our dreams and our purpose. So number nine, I said, God will give us grace wherever we are. God will give you grace whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley. Come on, somebody. God will give you grace whether you're doing good or you're doing bad. God will give you grace whether you have or you don't have. Y'all can go on and on and on, but God will give you grace wherever you are. Mm, come on, somebody. Again, that'll shout you right there. Number 10, our faithfulness to God will be thoroughly tested. Just know that. Number 11, obedience doesn't always produce the expected visible results. Number 12, the key to our promotion is within us. Number 13, God will arrange for people to lead us to our promise. Number 14, sometimes it may seem like all is lost. Number 15, perseverance over time will bring your dream to fulfillment. Number what was that 14 15 rather that was 16 god will always fulfill his purpose and more and number 17 god always sees the bigger picture so sometimes all we can see is what's right here but if i if i take these glasses off let me see hold on if i take with my glasses on i would say i could see my neighbor my sister's neighbor's as zip uh, address but i can't because of where her letters are, are situated but even if i could okay case in point with these glasses on i can see my neighbors the tag her tag numbers are both her vehicles in the driveway well if i take them off and look over top of my glasses it's just one big blur so god so these glasses on is god's bigger picture but without these glasses on all i'm seeing is the small picture so just understand that god has you God has you no matter what. And the fact that his mercies are new every single day, even when you don't deserve them. Some of y'all got up this morning and you didn't de deserve God's grace and or his mercies because you acted like a pure clown on yesterday. Some of you all don't even get up and thank God. You don't ever thank God. You don't ever think about him, but let something happen and it's, oh God. <coughs> and he said, yet and still, I'm going to give you grace and mercy. Mm. But I just hope that you will use this two-part series to really look at your goals and your dreams. Look at Joseph's life and know that just like Joseph had to go through some things, you're going through some things. 
and God blessed him just like he's going to bless you. Listen, that's it. That's my time, you guys, because I need to get on back down the road. I have quite a few things I need to do before I call it a night. If you're new to watching my videos, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is not your first rodeo, I want to say welcome back. Y'all know I miss you, but I don't, get a, I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening. Have an amazing weekend on purpose. Whatever you do, doesn't matter to me because I don't judge. I just ask that you do it responsibly and you're safe in what you do, where you go and who you hang around with. Your safety is what matters most to me. So, you know the drill, you know the spiel. I love you all to the moon and back and there is nothing. And I mean absolutely nothing that you can ever do about it because I love you so much and I want nothing but the best for you. The best is yet to come, you guys. I know it doesn't look like it right now and it may not even feel like it right now, but the best is yet to come. Hold on. Keep doing God's will and your best will come. Love you all and we'll talk again tomorrow.